Ah, uh, nothing like reading some comments first thing in the morning. Oh, this one looks interesting. Food theory idea. How long could you survive in a locked supermarket just using the food in there? Huh, that one's really good. I'll have to think about it. Yeah, that is a pretty good question. Internet, welcome to Food Theory, the show you can still safely consume well past its expiration date. Theorists, I just want to start off by saying how much I love the theory ideas you submit, especially when they result in episodes like the one today. But uh, as I soon learned, answers like these are not easy to come by, friends. I mean, I originated pixel measurements. I have been finding numbers where numbers don't exist for a decade now. But grocery store survival may just be one of the trickiest challenges that I faced in the last 10 years of making YouTube videos. For one thing, we're dealing with a lot of food products here. See, each distinct product in a grocery store gets assigned an SKU, or stock keeping unit. The average grocery store has an SKU count of about 33,000. That is 33,000 different product offerings. And that's not even taking into account the multiples of each item that the store has in its inventory, which means that even an average sized grocery store likely has hundreds of thousands of items on its shelves. But how long long can those items actually sustain a human being? In order to answer that, we'll need to go a step beyond counting the number of items and actually quantify the amount of food in a grocery store. After all, not every item in a grocery store is edible, and those that are edible have drastically different nutritional values. Plus, there's an added layer of complexity that has to be taken into account here. Spoilage. This is actually one of our biggest factors because it's not as though our hypothetical person trapped inside the grocery store can just eat millions and millions of calories on day one before anything spoils and then coast off a of body fat for the next 50 years. Sadly, the human stomach can only hold so much. And this is coming from experience. Test those limits each and every time I step foot inside a cheesecake factory. So this means that our hypothetical person, who I'm gonna call Evan in honor of today's commenter, is gonna have to employ an actual strategy to maximize the amount of food going into his stomach and minimize the amount of food that's going to spoil. Theorists, today's prompt is an absolute beast that has a lot of moving parts. So that's what's gonna make it so fun to answer. Hope you've all worked up an appetite. An appetite for knowledge, that is because today we're sinking our teeth into supermarket survival. For today's purposes, we're going to quantify food in terms of calories. The FDA uses 2,000 calories per day as a general guide for nutrition advice, though they're also quick to admit that this is an oversimplification and there's really no one-size-fits-all number for caloric intake. But for this hypothetical exercise, it's going to have to do the trick. We're also going to assume that Evan is locked inside an average-sized grocery store, which these days is about 38,000 square feet according to Progressive Grocer. And that's actually fantastic news for us because one of our food theory field researchers Luke just so happens to live up the street from a grocery store exactly that size. See, today's episode is going to require some good old-fashioned elbow grease, friends. This is a very specific question that we're attempting to answer, and the very specific inventory information that we need isn't publicly available knowledge. In order to get that info, we have no choice but to count the calories of grocery store items manually. And if that sounds like a ridiculous amount of work, yes. But this is food theory, people. If we're not going to answer the question that one person was curious about in the comments, and who else will? Finally, we need to make a couple of assumptions about Evan's circumstances. We're gonna actually assume that the power is out in Evan's post-apocalyptic survival scenario. That means no ovens, no refrigerators, and no freezers. We'll also assume that he has no running water. Why are we making things so hard on poor Evan? Well, because our answer becomes more useful that way. If we determine that Evan can live out his entire natural lifespan inside a worst-case scenario grocery store with no utilities, then we know that he can also live a full lifespan inside a grocery store where water is easy to come by and the shelf life of many foods can be extended using refrigeration. So, with all that housekeeping out of the way, the time has finally come to determine Evan's fate. How long is the maximum amount of time that one person can survive inside of a grocery store? Well, let's talk about that crucial first day. Me, I see it playing out a little something like this. Disheveled, Evan stumbles into a strikingly average-sized grocery store. In this case, called Stater Brothers, but it could be interchangeable for any around the U.S. He frantically locks the doors behind him. Outside, 
outside, some super intense doomsday scenario is raging on. I'm thinking aliens, zombies, alien zombies. You know, the works. The only other person with a key to the store is also the person with a key to Evan's heart. His true love, a uh, theory stuff. Together, they swore that if they were ever separated amid the chaos, they would rendezvous here at the Stater Brothers where they started their love in the frozen food aisle. Being the first to arrive, it is now Evan's sacred duty to wait and to survive for as long as he possibly can without leaving. Look, we put a lot of work into this episode. We are gonna amp it up with the drama. The grocery store's power is out, which means that the dairy section and the deli section are gonna be the first to spoil. Evan knows that he has to act quickly. Bacteria can render room temperature dairy and raw meat too dangerous for human consumption within hours. So if those calories are gonna count his survival, he's gonna have to move and move fast. Evan's first order of business is to begin extending the shelf life of any quick spoiling foods he possibly can. Evan knows that in addition to calories, his body needs 20 different amino acids in order to survive, plus a variety of minerals and vitamins. So the more varied his diet is, the better. Amino acids, you gotta catch them all. Evan also knows that he should be able to extend the life of various raw meats by about a month or two. Even without refrigeration and electricity, the store has everything he needs. There's 377 pounds of salt in aisle 6 for curing the meat, and there's a downright shocking amount of fire building supplies in aisle 13 for smoking the meat. Via curing and smoking, he's able to save 120,000 calories worth of raw meat from spoiling, which, while impressive, is a mere fraction of the 10.7 million meat supplied calories that would be available to him in the section if things didn't spoil. But hey, extra time is extra time. By doing this all-important first step, Evan can ensure that red meat, poultry, and even seafood are a part of his diet for the first couple months of his grocery store stay. Plus, packaged deli meats like salami will last for a month or so unrefrigerated. The fire, which Evan built near an open window so the smoke can escape, continues to be useful even after the meat's been smoked. Evan is able to dehydrate fruits and veggies with some success over his primitive campfire setup. The dehydrated vegetables wind up with a shelf life of about six months, and the dehydrated fruits last up to a year. And perhaps best of all, the open window will allow Evan to collect rainwater from here to the rest of his stay once the bottled water runs out. So by spending his first days in the grocery store hard at work, Evan manages to secure a year's worth of calories out of food that would have otherwise spoiled in a matter of weeks. Way to go, Evan. Life handed you lemons and you made dehydrated lemons. Ever the overachiever though, Evan goes on and makes his already varied diet even more varied by working baked goods from the bakery section into his meals. Thanks to Ziploc bags, he's able to get a few good weeks out of the cookies and breads before they mold over. He also takes full advantage of the vitamins in aisle 10. Since many of the vitamins begin to lose their potency after a couple of years, Evan knows that he might as well use them early and often to round out his diet. Finally, after one year and more than 730,000 calories consumed, the dehydrated fruit begins to spoil and Evan celebrates his one year anniversary inside the grocery store. But the celebration is a somber one, as there is still no sign of the fair very stuff. Once year two rolls around, Evan doesn't have to do nearly as much work. Well, aside from stirring the compost pile every once in a while, all the spoiled food from the deli, produce, dairy, and bakery sections really pile up. And that's not even mentioning the human waste. Ugh. These days, Evan is munching on foods with lengthy shelf lives, like dried pasta, white rice, rolled oats, powdered milk, molasses, potato flakes, whole wheat grains, factory sealed jerky, dried beans, and lentils. In order to get some fruits and veggies into his diet, he also starts dipping into certain canned foods that have relatively short shelf lives due to their high acidity, such as canned fruit, pickles, and jellies. All told, these foods provide him with 5.1 million calories over the course of seven years. When his eighth anniversary inside the grocery store arrives, life is pretty pleasant for Evan. You know, aside from the fact that his beloved theorista has yet to show up. Evan understands that two types of food await him on the shelves from this point forward. Foods with indefinite shelf lives and factory sealed foods that degrade over time. Indefinite shelf life foods include products like raw honey, jello mix, sugar, hard alcohol, soy sauce, cornstarch, and others. These products, if stored properly, will be just as tasty and nutritious decades down the line as they are today. The same cannot be said for the foods in the second category. Foods like canned goods, wine, breakfast cereal, and peanut butter, which all degrade grade over time. But it's worth knowing that these foods don't spoil like the raw meat and dairy did. As long as they remain unopened and completely sealed, these canned and factory sealed foods don't really become inedible, despite what their expiration dates might suggest. Now, it doesn't mean that the foods won't turn stale or rancid, they absolutely will. But even in their most disgusting forms, these foods won't make you ill, and they'll retain at least some of their nutritional value to Evan. That is, assuming he can manage to keep them down. After all, rancid peanut butter isn't exactly 
unpleasant to eat, and perhaps the only thing less appetizing than eating wet dog food is eating expired wet dog food. Deep down, Evan knows that he needs to eat his way through the latter category first, so let's get to it. For Thurista. Now, there are a lot of foods that fall into this category, which means Evan is forced to eat a lot of stale and rancid food over the next few decades. You heard that right, decades. The remaining canned goods alone account for 3.4 million calories, or 4.6 years worth of food. Because canned food is sterile and sealed, bacteria can't really get into it unless the can gets dented or damaged in some way. Similarly, factory sealed products like cereal, cookies, crackers, and chips will go stale and degrade over time, but they still should technically remain edible. This also applies to drinks such as soda, beer, and wine, and many jarred products like peanut butter and jarred nuts. All told, these products and others add up to 30.8 million calories. That is enough food to last Evan another whopping 42.2 years if he's able to space it out right. Now, it's hard to describe how unpleasant this 42.2 year stretch is for Evan. I mean, to get to this point, he would have had to have gone through 5,100 cans of wet pet food, but he persists. And now he gets to enjoy the good life again because the indefinite shelf life foods await him and they all still taste great, even 50 years after he got first locked into this place. When added together, these indefinite shelf life products accounted for 13.1 years worth of food. And once those 13.1 years run out, well, the shelves are empty and Evan runs out. As the final drop of vodka drips onto his tongue, Evan feels the icy grip of death overtake him. He collapses onto the ground soon to become one with the compost pile he cultivated for so many decades. And as his eyes close forever, he finally gets the answer he so desperately sought as a younger man. 63.3 years. A person can survive locked inside a grocery store using only the food inside for 63.3 years. But suddenly, moments after Evan draws his final breath, we hear a key turn in the lock. It's Therista! At long last, she's made it to their agreed-upon rendezvous point. She got waylaid for a few decades by, I don't know, what did I say? Zombie aliens? Something? Anyway, through it all, she never stopped thinking about her true love, Evan. Alas, though, she's too late. Yeah, it is a super bummer of an ending. If only Evan had figured out a way to stay alive just a wee bit longer, they could have held each other one last time. But there's no way Evan could have pulled that one off. The shelves are empty. There's nothing else he could have done. Unless... That's right, theorists. Evan still has one last card to play. Farming. A lot of grocery stores have at least a small flower section with potted plants. Our Stater Brothers was no different, and it had about four cubic feet of potting soil in all. This soil, of course, can be used to create a small garden with seeds and spores harvested from the produce section in the early days. Potatoes, which conveniently contain all the essential amino acids, are the crop that Evan probably should focus on when he first arrives in the store. Unfortunately, with such a limited supply of soil, Evan is never going to be able to survive entirely off his garden. Even if he doubles his soil volume by mixing in 50% compost, which is the maximum ratio recommended, eight cubic feet of soil can support about 24 potato plants. Each plant produces about 1,010 calorie potatoes per year for 26,400 calories annually. Theorists, that is not even two weeks worth of food. If only there was a crop that could grow in 100% compost. After all, Evan's got way more than four cubic feet of that lying around, and his compost pile only grows bigger with every passing day. Well, I've got good news for you, Evan, because there is such a crop. It requires no sunlight to grow, minimal water, and is readily available in grocery stores. I'm talking mushrooms. Mushroom stems from the grocery store are really easy to propagate. Pretty much all you need to create a mushroom terrarium is an empty plastic bottle and coffee grounds. And of course, Evan has plenty of access to those. From there, mushrooms can be introduced into the compost pile. And from here, the numbers start working out in Evan's favor in a big way. One pound of button mushrooms can contains 100 calories. A growing area of around 200 square feet can produce 5,000 pounds of mushroom per year. That means that in order to get the 2,000 calories per day he needs to survive, Evan would only need to plant about 3,000 square feet of button mushrooms. And in a 30,000 square foot grocery store, I don't think 10% of your floor space is too much to sacrifice for a crop that'll spare you the indignity of gulping down expired baby food. Between the mushrooms and the potato garden, Evan will have renewable resources of essential amino acids 
acids, vitamins, and minerals, not to mention a surplus of calories. So not only will farming allow Evan to survive long enough to see his beloved Theorista again, he won't have to eat a single expired food product along the way. So at long last, theorists were finally able to answer the question in full. Not only can a person survive their entire natural life locked inside of a grocery store using only the food inside, but that person's family and future generations can make do as well. Evan's story has a happy ending, and it's all thanks to farming. But hey, that's just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit. Thanks for supporting the Food Theory channel, friends. If you enjoyed today's episode, I would recommend heading over and watching our episode on pizza optimization next. We ran real-world tests to determine which pizza chain can give you the most bang for your buck. It's YouTube that you can use, so give her a watch, give that subscribe button a click, and I'll see you all next week.